right, here we go. Five, four, three. Hello, this is CJ Blink120, and today what we're going to be looking at is a multi computer setup. So, last time in our previous video, 0.0, .0 what we looked at was just a local host setup with a server and a client. Now, what we're going to do is step outside of that boundary and we're going to look at a setup that includes multiple different computers. It's kind of exciting, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing that we got to do now is remove this box here. Actually, what we'll do first, we're going to say this is a multi computer setup, but we're going to be on the same network. So rather than having local host, we're going to have our home network. And what I've done is I've tested on my home network and I've moved over to my school network and then even a business network after that. So starting out with home network really is pretty easy. Once you understand how the home network works, then you can move on and do other sorts of really great things after that. So after our, our home network, we're going to label this um, as uh, our IP address for our router. So I'm going to say 192.168.1.1. Some routers are different. Sometimes they're 192.168.0.1. Uh, Sometimes they're 192.168.1.255. I'm just going to go ahead and stick with 1.1 for the example right now. If you're watching this video, you should have a pretty good idea of how to set up your home network. If you don't already know how to set up your home network, I would suggest Googling that or looking up another YouTube video. It's a pretty easy process, but it is crucial to be able to set this up. Now in our home network, which has this um, our router's IP address as well as our subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Our server and our client both have to have IP addresses in the IP address range. So we'll just say our, our server is 192.168.1.10. And our client is going to be 192.168.120. Okay. So here we go. Now this open simulator.exe, we talked a little bit last time about all of the different things that are to be running on our server um, or running on our client. Um, but one thing that we didn't quite touch on were um, the, uh, the ports that each of these servers runs on. So let's touch on ports real quick. We know what an IP address is. Basically the IP address is uh, is the routing address for your computer. So if you if your computer is sending out internet traffic, it has to know where to go and it has to where know where to return. And IP addresses help out with that. But you can imagine lots and lots and lots of different things are running on your computer, whether they're programs or background services. So it's very important that your computer assigns not only an IP address but a port to every single packet that flows out of your computer's network card or wireless card. Why? Because let's set our Apache web server running um, at the same time that our MySQL database was running at the same time as our Open Simulator server was running. If all of the packets were simply addressed to 192.168.1.10, the client might be using our Open Simulator.exe and it also might be using our Apache web server. So what happens? Our packets start to collide and, and information starts to get lost. So in order to separate the different processes, we use different ports. The port is always designated by a semicolon. Open Simulator by default runs on port 9000 and we're going to be talking ex extensively later on how to set up Open Simulator with multiple instances and multiple different ports, but that's for a later video. Our Apache web server always runs port 80, um, and PHP and MySQL kind of run behind the scenes. If you had file transfer protocol, file transfer protocol runs on port 25, secure socket layer is port 443, and you can Google uh, a list of all of the different default ports for different programs. And 
there have been there are quite quite a few different default ports so I'd recommend looking at those and becoming familiar with at least a, f a few of them um, but for right now all we're going to use is port uh, 9000 for our open simulator.exe and port 80 for our Apache web server now that we have that straightened out we've got to talk a little bit about how the packets go from the client to the server and back so we're going to create a little packet here for us. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it over here. And we'll shrink this down a little bit because packets are smaller than computers. Pretty, pretty consistently smaller, I would say. So this is going to be a packet. And a packet is just a little bit of information. So the packet could be something encapsulated uh, that says hi, right? Packet hi. Okay, here we go. So packet hi is being sent from the client to the server. Okay, from the client and to the server. Now what we've got to figure out is how do we address this packet so it can make it to the server and back? A lot of times what packets how packets will be addressed is they'll have a sender IP and a receiver, a uh, sender IP and a sender port, and then a receiver IP and a receiver port. We make our pack a little bit bigger. So once we have our, our sender IP, our sender IP is going to be 192.168. Dot 1.20 and it looks like our packet has grown to be just about the size of one of our computers. Our sender port in this case, if we are sending from imprudence, this could choose any random port to be sent from. A lot of times it's a very important to address the packet to the correct port on the receiving end, but the packet from which or the port from which the packet is sent doesn't always matter. As long as there's an available port on your computer's network card, then it will go ahead and use that port. So we could have any sort of random port. Actually, that's a little bit, little bit ridiculous, but we might just say something like that. That is our sending port for imprudence. So our port is going to be this. And our receiver IP has to be on our same network and our receiver IP is the server. So we're going to go 192.168.1.20. And finally we have our receiver port which is uh, we're going to open simulator so we're going to 9000. And that is our packet. So we're going to go ahead and, and group this together here. We can. Oh, never mind. Okay, so we have our packet that travels from here to here. Client says hi to server. And then so a server would take this information and say, okay, so who did this come from? They told me hi, so I want to say hi back. So they would replace the sender IP in the sender port with the receiver IP and the receiver port. Sometimes the receiver port would change. For example, if there was another server running on it, they'd say port 80 there or something, depending on which server it is. The, uh, but now we have to change it uh, to the sender IP and the sender port. Sender IP and sender port. Now the sender IP this time is is 192.168.1.10 and our receiver IP is 192.168.1.20 and our sender port just like in the previous case could be any random port as long as the port is available on the computer. Now this packet is being from the server back to the client and the client receives it 
and they've said hi to each other. And that's the basis for how our open simulator communication happens. We're about out of time for this video. What we're going to work on next is a little bit more in depth with, you know, how do we get things to communicate from computer to computer when we're in our local network. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe to my channel, CJBlink120, for great Open Simulator videos. As well, I have a PayPal account, and any donation that you make will go to making excellent videos for the Open Simulator community. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.